All right, guys, they're playing some Jack's top lane in the new patch with the new visuals and everything. And this time we're playing versus Mundo. And what we have is Lido Tempo, Triumph, Alacrity, Elastent, Biscuits, and then we're also running Cosmic. Now, let's have some fun playing some Jax once again. I have never seen the popularity of Jax being so high in my life before. Jax is literally almost the most played champion in the entire game. Almost as close as ADCs. 17%. There's not a single top laner that has this high right now. Which is really impressive. Nice. I'll pick up my Q here for the, for the leap. Oh, nice. I was going to hit the Q and then auto ignite. He could have probably killed him though. But I was like, he was just outside range. I was purposely holding my Q in case he would flash. All right. Anyways, this is going to be a sweet little rank game because like Jax is just so strong at the moment. And getting Jax in your game is uh, quite tough, I'm not gonna lie. There's people out there banning Jax right now because the popularity is so high. Nice, let's place a little ward down right here. They have a hacker him, so I'm suspecting that he will uh, pet the upside. I'm pretty sure, actually, he will. I'm not really touching the wave. I'm gonna let Mundo just simply walk up here. We have a Lilia also pathing top, so it's likely we'll get into a two, uh, two versus two. I'm gonna make him a bit more convenient. <laughs> Let him just walk up like that. Oh, I think that's not gonna be it. Oh, nice, it actually is. Okay, cool. This is literally my Jax games all the time. Jax is so easy to snowball with in the early game too. Like we're, we're talking about Jax, right? The mid late game is definitely secured. Jax in the mid late game is just so strong. But like Jax is also fantastic in the early game. Like it's a well-rounded champion at every stage. It doesn't matter if it's early game. It doesn't matter if it's late game. This champion functions so well. All right, let's go this one. There you go. So for the build, we're going to go into Blade of the Rune King build. We can technically also go into Define as a first item, but that would be absolutely troll in this game because Blade, especially versus a tank like Mundo, Blade of the Rune King is unbelievably broken. You know, especially if we're talking about Mundo or Orn or Malphite or literally anything that is like tank related going super tank mode. This item is perfect. I'll show you. Let's see if we can thin this out just a little bit. Nice. Oh, he managed to pick up the passive. It's not very good. I think he might actually get away. <laughs> oh no, I tried spamming my Q and he actually made it out. He just got very lucky here. It's okay, though. We gotta push this as fast as possible. Preferably, I'm gonna keep it here just for now. Because uh, one problem, the wave will get stuck in the wrong position. Which means I gotta slow push. Okay, now we can hard push again. This is a bit of a risk I'm about to take because of Ekarim. Nice. Okay. So despite, like, unfortunately not killing the Mundo, um, we do manage to push the wave all the way in. And that's very much it. We didn't gather that much of a lead because we were, like, pushing the wave in. We kind of didn't have a choice either. We just sort of had to do it. All right. Let's go for two pots here. So like normally if you were to make a kill against your opponent, you could literally just freeze the wave and you could benefit from it so much because you could just make him deny all the farm. Um, but if we were to do that in this case, being like 200 HP, that would be ultra bad. Like, because the moment he would walk back his full HP, I'm like 200. There's not a chance of me anymore. So getting that kill before 
really mattered. Like, we actually got nothing from the fight. But it's whatever. We gotta be careful about the Hecarim specifically. There's a massive fight in bar lane. However, we don't see where the Hecarim is. So we gotta make a really good decision. By the way, I have cold, really cold hands, man. It is actually becoming, you know, slowly winter again. I'm feeling it. Going from, you know, transitioning from the summer into the next season. Feels so wrong. It's so cold. Doesn't feel right. And playing League of Legends with cold hands, bro. Oh, man. It is tilting. It's one of the things that every time it's winter, I always use, uh, before I get into a League of Legends game, I literally always use like an, uh, um, like a hand warmer with a battery, literally all the time. That's what my strategy was last year, and I guess I'm just going to have to charge it again. I haven't charged in a while. Alright, we've got a nice little slow push. Uh, we still don't see the jungler, by the way. We'll force this. There you go. I've been slow pushing very much on purpose with the intentions of avoiding the Hecarim temporarily until I see him. But as it turns out, he literally just never shown. Wait a second. I'm still hoping that I can see the Hecarim somewhere, but he just doesn't appear. Oh, it's got the passive. They actually managed to pick up the passive. I'm going to start maxing some points in my Q here. I prefer Q above the E1. Uh, so the passive is down. Nice. I think Hecarim could maybe appear. That's okay. I wish I had Ignite. <laughs> right now. Killing this Mundo is definitely a challenge, because this guy is playing so safe. I can't go back. The planning is about to go down. Oh, wow. How much is that HP? 4,004? Literally 4 HP? That's a troll, right? That's a monkey. All right, wave, take it down. This is a risk. Pretty big risk. There you go. I got it. All right, let's uh, back off here. I cancel my backboard. I want to see what happens. <gasps> wow. All right. Nice. He was. I knew he was gonna do that, man. Just had that feeling he was going to. There you go, got him. Alright, so Hecarim has finally shown again. So apparently he's been like power farming through the entire time. Nice. Let's go back here. I have like very much no intentions of like overstaying for plates or anything, especially now because he had teleport. We've got the blade now. This is very much over for him. I'm gonna sell off boots. I don't care about that anymore. I mean, the potions sold it for for the uh, to get boots. Nice. Well, it's GG. Blade of Throne King is so broken. Once you build this thing, it really does not matter how tanky your opponent's gonna be. It doesn't matter if he's got a Sunfire, a Heart Steel, Thormill. It really does not matter. Blade is that strong, especially if you later on combine it with Define or whatever. The item is even better. Now I just keep chasing him. And he's gonna die. But at least I hope. Hmm. Unbelievable. The second time that Mundo lives on with like 10 HP. How unlucky is that? Don't you agree here? I'm going to cancel the backport for sure. 
Nice. The longer we cancel the back port, the more I actually win. Because the less farm he's going to obtain, right? Okay, now we pick up the wave gun. I think I'm just gonna get all of them. Hackram is in mid. Nice. And we also pick this one up because I think that we have the opportunity. Yeah, let's go back here. This is so good, man. We have such a massive advantage now because we got multiple plates. We, you know, um, we literally made him lose an insanely large amount. The, the lead we have right now is just massive and it continues to like build up over time we've got we're running a solid farm as well actually got a mid lane winning the game and my bot lane is doing very well <laughs> lately I've, I've made so many videos where i had to like actually 1v9 the game so seeing seeing uh this is uh refreshing you know what i mean Feels kind of good, I'm not gonna lie. You know, they're not overperforming. They're not like going, you know, they're not having an insane game, but it's, it's, it's doing average. I'm liking it. All right, we've got the tower. Nice. Let's pick up the next wave. Sidestep, of course. Not sidestepping that one. We haven't really received a, a jungle gank or whatever. And let's pick this one up. Nice. There's a Hecarim on the way. I gotta be fast here. Okay, I think we can do a really nice flank in mid because I don't think that they're expecting me to be here at all, actually. So, hmm. okay, it's not really the direction I wanted to go for, but hey, it's okay. I jumped. <laughs> I jumped into a Jinx R, man! I literally jumped into that stuff. I, you know, I was actually quite scared because I thought I was going to run into a Kassadin. I thought it was going to be Kassadin showing. Okay. Well, let's go for Warhammer. We're also going to go into a Mercs. Uh, there it is. Quite a scary one. I want to go Steel Caps for Jinx and Hecarim. I also want to go Mercs. Um, I think I might go Steel Caps. In fact, I'm still going steel caps, you know? Let's go ahead and do it. I really need steel caps because uh, Kassadin, well, he'll scale, of course, to the late game, but he's not that strong at the moment. And on top of that, Hecarim and this Jinx are scary, man. They're also having a good game. Steel caps will do a great job. Nice. Let me just pick up the wave here too. I suspect that Jinx will show. Actually, that must have been taken. Not bad. I think that Jinx will show bot lane. And of course, if I show here, I'll literally show what I'm doing. There you go. Let's pick up uh, a little bit of a part of the tower because around two people are showing. There's still three other people missing. Actually, this guy's very much alone. Thank you very much. No idea what the casting was thinking there, but I appreciate it. Hmm. 
Very well done. I don't think I can go for the tower. I would like to force it, but Mundo is very strong, actually. This guy's got a hard steel with a bramble. So, forcing a dive is more challenging. Just a tower, and that's really it. I don't want to go anything else. There we go. Okay. Uh, we can actually buy into fine right now. That will make a big difference. Nice. I'm definitely keeping the yellow trinket. So, it would be the best call to be on the side lanes again. Um, and trying to either go for a catch or going for a flank but we already have Lilia topside so what i'm gonna do is i'll just pick up like one more wave here there we go we'll let that push we go topside real quick. We will uh, take care of the Cassadin. The dragon spawns in like 45. An enemy has been slain. Actually, this is not so bad. Yeah, this guy's gonna die already. At least, uh, he just feed it away. Nice. That's big. The uh, Jinx had a shutdown. So I've just gotten so much from it. Let's pick this one up. Well, that mode goes dead for sure. I could technically re-engage. I had my Q available right on the last second. Probably within range. But it's better if I don't. Oh, nice. Alright, we got another red buff. <laughs> I love how the Vayne actually took the red buff while getting chased out by a Cassidy. Got him too. Yeah, this game is going the right direction. It's going very well. I'm not expecting it to get any worse. Jackson, the late game is fantastic. Now, before we actually decide to go back i want to see if i can get like one more catch on the hecarim oh that's a ward never mind nice oh yeah that's not going to work very well so let's go ahead and get steel caps. The next item I go afterwards is probably going to be either a guardian's angel or let me check. Um, I also really want to go hole breaker. Let's go extra hole breaker. I like that. Really nice item here. And we go back top side. Drake spawns in like three min and thirty. All right, three people mid, one guy top, which means one guy is still missing. My teammates are making a bad mistake getting caught here. That was terrible. I think they might be pathing top, so I have to walk away. Yeah. They're doing it, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty... Yes, they're doing it. This will be a tough one. 
Because they're like five people. Well, if the Baron cancels out, then it, everything is okay. This Vayne goes literally 1v9 mode, gives their shutdown away. We have only one job. Cancel the, the Baron, that's it. Whatever. I can't really go, uh, well, let's go top. I'm just gonna secure the blue. It's not being taken. Nice. Okay. Oh man, he's got 32. He's got 32 on the heart steal. Oh man, he's got literally no stacks. That's actually upsetting for him. Oh, um, for real? Okay. I gotta be careful because uh, everybody's missing again, as always. So we can go overextend too much. They're showing right now. Let's go for another one. Again, my teammates are getting caught in mid lane. They're not learning the lesson very well. Okay. Nice. You need to walk away. I'm not entirely sure where they are at the moment. Ah, so they apparently we're pathing topside. Okay. Uh, next item we go for will be... I want to go Spear of Shojin, but I think it would be a more optimal choice if we go Death Stance into a Guardian's Angel. So we let's go mid lane first, and for mid lane we probably path topside. It depends. Dragon will spawn in 15, so... It's getting close. Gotta go for it first. Learned every weapon, bested every opponent. Nice. Oh, somebody's about to feed. Oh, never mind. Every time I chase the Jinx, she literally always gets away with the passive. Because my teammates will die against her. Okay. Very well done. I am not happy, man. This Jinx is always overextending. People keep dying against the passive. The Pantheon was actually in bot lane. When the the dragon uh, was there, my teammates have been consistently dying since the mid game. Okay, we'll keep on trying. I think that this game is still partially winnable, especially because we have a vein. But it's probably going to be a long game. Okay, let's run bot lane. I'm gonna make uh, sure we use the hole breaker. I don't want a team fight, man. Their team fight is so much better right now than our team fight. And like, unless the vein lives on, right? If Vayne does not get caught in a fight and she somehow happens to literally auto attack for the beginning to the end, we will win. But like. I can't imagine <laughs> she would live from this decomp, man. <laughs> they have like two assassins. Shut down. It's not really working to have a vein splitting. Alright. Yeah, the vein is trolling the game, that's why.
the Vayne is trolling the game. She's not trying to actively uh, do anything about mid. Alright. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Isn't that the... I, I don't want to complain too much, but like the vein was starting to... The, the vein started feeding the game and is now trolling the game. Is, isn't that like ironic, man? Isn't that like what vein plays always do? <laughs> These people all behave the same, you know? It's like seeing a... It's like seeing a Draven. Like, it's the same stuff. Draven plays do the same thing. They get fed early game, then they start feeding the mid game, and then they troll in the late game. <laughs> it's, it's such a basic pattern. It's the same thing with certain champions. People people share the same behavior. They try and copy each other. It's very much how it works. Very well done. I don't see a world where we could ever win that team fight, ever. I think I, I have to back. Yeah, they're about to finish. I actually don't think I can make any difference. No. Yeah, that's GG. We had a really good game. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do in, with the mid game like this. This is what it is. Hey, this is Jack Stoplane. Thanks so much for watching this YouTube video. And I'll see you next time. Peace.